Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. I'm Dr. Stephen Stokes. Uh, I'm glad you're here. Today, a fun video uh, featuring one of my favorite tools, the flex beam. If you don't know what a flex beam is, please watch my uh, other video, my flex beam masterclass, where I get into all the tech and about why this device is the best um, red light therapy device on the market today. Um, however, that's not what this video is about. This is a video where I want to talk about unconventional uses of the flex beam. Now, before we get started, I have first a disclaimer. These, uh, these suggestions are my suggestions based on what I do myself and what I've seen work with patients of mine. These are for informational purposes only, for educational purposes only. So I am not telling you to use this device in your own case for these unconventional purposes that may not be something that is good for you or maybe something that is good for you you're going to have to investigate that yourself and make your own decisions many of these suggestions are not in alignment with what FlexBeam recommends which is okay if you have one of these devices you can make up your own decisions but again today a fun video where I'm going to explore some non-conventional uses of this great device so we want to start off and talk about number one. I'm going to give seven, by the way, seven, seven unconventional uses. Number one is going to be for hair loss. So if you're somebody that is suffering from hair loss, or maybe you're somebody that just has thinning hair and wants to build up the integrity of the scalp and of those hair follicles, there's a lot of good research that suggests red light therapy is useful for that. And you can see uh, on the market, there's a lot of these hats that you can buy. They're like baseball caps filled with with red lights and and they're very expensive right some of them are over a thousand dollars well you can use your flex beam you can set this flex beam on uh, number one setting which is what i like because remember number one setting is going to give you the most photons the most red light photons but it's not going to penetrate very deeply but when it comes to hair loss and activating the hair follicles we don't need to go very deep right we're not trying to to penetrate those photons yeah, into the skull or anything like that. It's just mostly surface, superficial. So we set this on number one setting. We can take it like this. We can put it back like this here and we can attach this with the Velcro on the sides and we can treat, treat that area. And um, I do this because I have a little hair loss back here on the back of my head. And um, I think it's really helped. If you look at previous videos over the last year and you look at my hair, you'll notice my hair is thinning out quite a bit and it's not very thick. And now I've been using the flex beam for quite a while. I noticed that, that my hair is just a lot thicker and people are commenting on it. So definitely, uh, use this if you want to improve the quality of your hair. And while we're on that topic, the second, um, use that I would recommend is for wrinkles and the and the the face right i call it the photon facelift and how you use this and how i've used this and how my wife uses this is pretty unique so if you're not familiar with castor oil get yourself some organic castor oil the one i like is heritage store right here you get this castor oil and you put this over your face like so and then after you apply it to the face, take your flex beam again, number one setting I find is the best and set it up like this, right? So that you are fairly close to the skin. Remember every um, inch of distance away from the emitter that the object is, we lose a ridiculous amount of photons. So we want this as close as possible. However, because the skin is going to be gooey from the castor oil, we don't want to just put it right up against the skin because your flex beam is going to get dirty and greasy from that. So arrange it so that you're away a little bit like so, right? And apply your treatment to the face with the flex beam using the castor oil. Uh, that's something that's very effective that I found to be very useful. And my wife as well, she does that quite frequently. She does that probably three to four times a week. Hey, she looks great. What can I say? The next thing I want to talk about, which is more controversial, is the eyes. So we already know that there's a lot of research that suggests that red light therapy is very good for the eyes. So if somebody is suffering from even something simple, right? Like 
uh, like vision problems, eye strain from, from being on a computer or something more serious like a pathological disease with the eyes. It does appear that red light therapy, those red light wavelengths have a positive effect on the eyes. Now this is very controversial because we are told in most of the, um, the cautions with red light therapy to not expose it directly into the eyes that it can damage the eyes. Uh, some of the literature suggests that it's like looking into the sun. Now, I personally do not agree with that. And I use the red light therapy device on my eyes quite a bit. And um, But again, this is me and this is not me recommending it for you. I'm just giving you exposure to what I use. If you're really concerned about exposing your eyes to the red light therapy, if you feel that that could be something that could be overt uh, for you, then what I would recommend is going to Home Depot or Lowe's, buying a pair of these. These are plastic uh, plastic glasses, and they're used for people that are laying out uh, ceilings, ceiling tiles. They use them with a laser to line up the ceiling tiles. They'll put these on, and then they can see the laser more easily. Well, if you just wear these, all the light that comes into your eye now is tweaked to that red light frequency and this can be very beneficial to your eyes um, if you're somebody that is suffering from some sort of eye pathology so you can just use these if you like however i am a person that uses the flex beam for that again i set it on a very low setting number one which is my favorite setting by the way and then i will place it not up against my eyes, not directly into my, into my eyeballs. I'll place it fairly far away and then I will relax and I'll expose my eyes to that, to that uh, photon radiation. Again, it's a personal choice that I make, not something I'm recommending that you do, but um, something that you can consider and maybe you can use that information to design your own sort of approach. But that's how, how I use it. The next thing I want to talk about is the genitals. And so there's a lot of research that suggests that uh, treating, for example, the scrotum with red light therapy can be uh, positive for increasing sperm count and things like that. Also, there's a lot of nerves in that area of the body, a lot of nerves that are um, useful for sexual activity, they're useful for prostate health, they're useful for uh, urination and the bladder, a lot of important structures down there. So what we can do is we can take the flex beam like this. We can curve it like this, if you can imagine. I'm not going to demonstrate this, but we can curve it like this and we can put this between the legs. And for a man, this is very good for stimulating uh, the testicles. And also it's useful for a woman, right? You can use this um, also uh, for the vagina. It will help with uh, dryness and certain things like that that can be a problem, especially as uh, women get older. So this is a useful technique as well. Um, enough, enough said on that. We'll just leave it, at, leave it at that. But that is something that can be very useful. Um, something else I want to talk about is the stress response in the body. So the overall uh, response in the body of stress can be lessened with red light therapy. And we know the connection between stress response and the vagus nerve. We know that if we can have a healthy vagus nerve, we get that nice response, that nice balancing of the autonomic nervous system between the sympathetics and the parasympathetics. Red light therapy seems to strengthen that pathway. Now, the problem with this is, is that the vagus nerve is a cranial nerve, right? So it lies deep in the skull, right? In the brain, basically. And it's hard to get to, even with a setting of number three, it's difficult to penetrate the skull to get into those, those nerve centers. However, what we can do is we can cheat. We can again use a number one setting, which gives us the most photons, but it is only superficial. And we can use that to stimulate the um, collateral pathways of the vagus nerve. And there's a few. So there's a few of these branches that we can stimulate that if we follow those nerve branches back, they go back to the vagus nerve. There's a few access points, um, if you want to think of it like that. Uh, the first is here. So if we, if we feel the hyoid bone right here in the throat, it's just below the hyoid bone right here. And this is going to be the superior laryngeal nerve. And this is a is a branch of the vagus nerve. And by stimulating that with red light, we can 
we can sort of go back through that pathway and affect the vagus nerve. So we would just take this, we would apply it like this over that area, and you're going to get a great stimulation of the vagus nerve. The other area that is connected is the air, right? The air. And so we know that there is an auricular branch of the vagus nerve here. So we can also apply this light source over the ear and we can again indirectly stimulate and strengthen the vagus nerve. Pretty remarkable. And that is going to immediately calm down the nervous system. And if you use it over time, it's going to retrain the nervous system so that when you're under stress, your body can adjust and balance that by firing the parasympathetics a lot easier. Very useful techniques that I use quite a bit. Next thing I want to talk about, which is number six, if you're counting, number six out of seven, is the organs of the body. So everybody always thinks about, um, you know, bad knee treating the knee or a bad shoulder. We treat the shoulder. Nothing wrong with that. These direct approaches are good. We have to remember also we have a lot of organs in the body. These organs are uh, really important for the entire system. And so let's give the organs what they deserve as well. And let's give them some treatment with this remarkable device. Now, when we're treating the organs, we don't want to use number one setting. We want to go deeper. Depending on how deep that organ is, we have to use either a number two or a number three. I tend to use a number three a lot of times to get deep into these systems. And uh, I find that that works really good. What kind of organs are we interested in? Right here, we're interested in the thymus for the immune system. Thymus is very important for the immune system, right? So we treat the thymus. Um, underneath the ribs on the back, we're interested in the adrenal glands, right? That sit on top of the kidneys. The adrenal glands are very important for stress response. We like to treat those. There's two of those, by the way. Then we have the appendix. And you can check an anatomy book to get exactly the locations of these different organs. You certainly want to make sure that you're treating the right area if you're trying to go after these organs. But the appendix is very important. A lot of people think the appendix is not important. Um, appendix, if you have it, it's a very important little appendage. And I believe that it also is involved in the the storage and the creation of the good bacteria in your system. So I think the appendix is very important. Also, right next to the appendix in that general area, there is something called the ileocecal valve. And the ileocecal valve has been for a long, you know, has a long history with chiropractors and manual therapists as being an important uh, part of the body to treat. Unfortunately, the medical community kind of disregard it, but um, it's so important in many things. And so we like to treat the ileocecal valve and that area. We can combine the ileocecal valve and the appendix and that general area of the body by just applying this over, over that area, right? And where it's located is if you find your ASIS here, if you uh, find your umbilicus or your belly button and you sort of go a third of the way up like this is kind of the area so we just use that over that area and it works really well for treating the ileocecal valve so anybody that has any kind of you know problems with their colon uh, elimination any of that stuff also stress ileocecal valve has a long history of connections with a lot of disorders you can research that yourself but ileocecal valve is an important place to treat and uh, finally Perhaps the most powerful key to unlocking health in the system with red light therapy on conventional use number seven is the medulla oblongata. And this is, if, if you know anything about me, if you've been to my clinic, if I've talked to you, you know that the medulla oblongata for me is, is everything, right? Now, the medulla oblongata is the center for the autonomic nervous system. I believe it is the most important center in the entire body, right? And that's a whole other conversation that we can have at some point if you're interested. But basically for you and for where we're at, if you feel the little bump on the back of your skull and you just go below it, so on the back of the upper neck right here, this is the area that we want to treat. We want to use this. Back here, we, like this, we just want to relax and treat that medulla oblongata. That medulla oblongata controls... Well, it controls everything in your whole body, right? It is the control system for everything that's important, for all the automatic res responses, breathing, right? All the things that you don't think about that just happen, that's where they are controlled. So it's a very important center and regular use of red light therapy 
projecting those photons into the medulla oblongata it makes it happy, right? <laughs> you have a happy medulla oblongata, right? Uh, and that way you won't have to blame it for anything, right? Uh, remember water boy? It's the uh, medulla oblongata, right? That's what the water boy said. Remember that with Adam Sandler? But it's an important, uh, important structure. And it's an important structure that I treat all the time. So if I'm treating a knee problem or a back problem or a stomach problem, if I'm treating anything with a patient, I always like to end the procedure, especially if I'm doing manual therapy, end the treatment with some sort of treatment that affects the medulla oblongata. This is an easy way to affect it, um, just applying the flex beam to that area uh, of the body. And as far as getting in there, I like to use a number two setting for that, but you can experiment and maybe you'll use a number one, maybe use a number three. It's really, it's really a little bit of, a, of an experimentation. The reason I like number two is it goes a little deeper, but remember this, when you're looking at these settings, always remember, that even these deeper tissue structures, right? So even the structures that are very deep into the body, a lot of times they have superficial branches that those nerves, so example, for example, the nerve that controls like your gallbladder, that's deep into the body, right? You would think you need to use a number three setting with the flex beam to get deep in there to affect that. But remember, the way the body's designed is a lot of times those organs and those deep structures they have superficial branches of the same nerves that go to the surface of the skin. Those nerve receptors are in the very surface of the skin. Usually they're in the surface of the skin that is directly um, in front of or behind or on top of those organs and deep structures. So if we just stimulate those receptors in the surface of the skin, we can normally uh, affect the deeper structures. And that's a very important point to remember when you're playing with the flex beam and you're deciding on protocols. I hope this was useful. If you have more questions, please just reach out to me directly. I'm usually available. You can text me on my phone. You can email me, you can call me on the phone if you want. And you can find out all about me on my website, drstephenstokes.com. Wish you the best of health and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Dr. Steven Stokes and, and welcome. If you're interested in purchasing a flex beam, uh, you can use the QR code on your screen right now or the link in the video description. The flex beam sells for around $549 and the code that I have will give you a $60 discount, which is a pretty good savings. And they come in charcoal, this one's charcoal, and they also come in white. You get the flex beam, you get the case, um, you get all the Velcro straps to attach it and you get a manual with some eye protection as well. They come in charcoal, this one's charcoal, and they also come in white, and you can see that you have the settings, the three different settings for the three different depths, uh, and the power button. So it's a great device, easy to manipulate and maneuver around the areas of your body you wanna treat, and again, with the discount coupon, you save $60. Thank you very much.